Welcome back to another episode of Black Girls Texting. It's your girl, Shari. Hey, bitches. It's your girl, Charles Pinky. I didn't know we were singing and I'm not prepared. It's Gwen. Oh, I kind of said it. <laughs> that was melodic. Welcome back to another episode of Black Girls Texting. It's just me and Charles Pinky today because Glenn did not in fact, quit her job. You see what the <laughs> fuck I'm talking about? She ain't quitting her job. I literally just rolled out of bed. Oh, but this is nice. how much I love our community. I'm going to still get on the mic. Period. 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 Support. Okay. Per. What did these people put in my hair? Ew, did you just lick your finger? That is fucking gross. I did. It's like flaking OD. Deep. If you are okay, not anyways. watching the video, Shadi just licked her finger and rubbed it on her hairline. Yeah, because I'm like, my braids are... She was like really trying to lay down my baby hairs, but it's like, sis, what was the product? Anyways, um, how's <laughs> everyone doing? And by everyone, you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm doing great. We recorded a Patreon first, so um, just I'll do a quick recap. Um, I'll reply to the fact that I just came back from Mexico City, as always had a great time. We were looking at wedding venues there. Um, and I will leave on red. Well, you know, we're on Twitter now, so I will leave on red. Well, hmm. we're on Twitter and TikTok now. So I'll leave the trolls on red. But also you should follow us. Our Twitter is Black Girls Text One and our TikTok is Black Girls Texting, I believe. Yes, yes it is. Um, yeah. I will go in that same vein. Um, I'm going to leave TikTok on red and reply. Mm. Um, we have obviously been utilizing other forms of social media because we got to get with the times. Right. <laughs> we can't We're going to get old- left behind. Right. <laughs> can't be the old ladies on Instagram that no one's using and the shit algorithm. So yeah. we've been posting more on TikTok and like, I think just thinking about the type of content to make, I will just kind of scroll through and like our for you page. I don't think really has a personality because it's just us like three looking at random shit. Like it doesn't really know like what we like or what we don't like. So I feel like I just see a lot of popular things and it's a little creepy one to see like everyone doing the same trends Mm. where it just doesn't feel interesting. Like, don't get me wrong. Like, I'm sure if we end up in like black talk, like how there's black Twitter, it's mm-hmm. fucking hilarious because a lot of pages I follow on Instagram are like TikToks, like people reposting TikToks. Yeah. And they're funny. And they're hilarious. But right now I'm in like white women with filler singing ice spice <laughs> songs and doing like weird voiceover. I'm just, I don't know. And it's strange. I don't like these terms we talked about on the Patreon. I think the thing, digital blackface is like a whole fucking thing. Like I'm not trying to make this like a Harvard dissertation, but I just find it strange when white people are like using very black audio clips, especially Mm. if the audio clip says nigga. I'm like, ah! Yeah. I mean, not even just white, non-black. Non-black. Yeah. But it's particularly like cringy when i see like a i don't want to call anyone out but like you know these former bachelorette contestants who are just Mm. trying to stay relevant and it's like you don't know anything about this you just saw it was a trending audio and you made a video of ice spice with your golden retriever it's weird i don't weird get it i don't like it but i'm replying because it is such an interesting space Mm-hmm. Like to see trends happen so fast in the moment. I feel like they're on to something. Yeah. I mean, they must be. It's been around for a while. But like, it's it is a big cool. app right now. Yeah. Yeah. It is cool to see. Yeah. It's just strange. It's very strange. strange. Um, yeah. I mean, do you have a hotline bling? Um, well, if you all know, I went to Cuba. Mm -hmm. A while ago, we still have a Cuba group chat and it was a lot of like family members and loved ones in my like religious community. And one of the um, women studied Yoruba like in college, like the language. And so she's like 
really good at it. And so she just started a Yoruba class. Ooh. I'm not taking it, but a lot of people Why? in the group yeah. chat are, because girl, when am I going to go to the Yoruba class? <laughs> I was like, sign me up. And then I was like, I'm never going to go. I can barely go to my Spanish class. Um, But it is cool because they'll like talk about it in the chat. And I'm like, this is so beautiful. Like, it's really nice to see. So I'm like, you guys go crazy. They're like, you got to download the Yoruba keyboard. I'm like, yeah, no, "Mm." but it's very cute. It's precious. I finally watched Woman King on the plane. Oh, what did you think? I just as you said, Yoruba made me think of Africa. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I I didn't think it was that bad. I thought it was I thought it was okay. Um, obviously, it was not historically accurate. There right, was not a big push to end slavery, you know. But um, a Disney version of what really happened, <laughs> right? Um, but yeah, I, I thought it was it was cool. It was it was cute. Yeah. Powerful imagery. Yes. If that's how it really happened, that would be amazing. Yes. But yeah, it's not. And um, we don't have a black girl doing shit this week. We have a black man doing shit, surviving, yes. thriving. So you're going to hear from the homie Nunny in a minute. All right, y'all. It's time for the group chat. chat, chat. All right, y'all. So we have Dasheen Jordan, a.k.a. Nunny, in the building. He was born and raised in Far Rockaway, Queens. Far Rock. Rock Nunny is a filmmaker, freelancer, and editor. And you may know him from his work with Everyday People for the past 10 years. But he has also worked with Rock Nation, Complex, Duce, Ho Living, Vibe Magazine, Dreamville, and many more. He also shoots with Nappy Hour and Freedom Party. Then he also finished writing a book called Dead Ass Facts, Volume 1, the New York City edition. And ladies, he is a Libra, single, and loves New York City. So we've got an eligible <laughs> bachelor in the building. <laughs> did you Welcome put that in your bio? Yes, he did. Because you're a single Libra? I am a he single Libra. I need you to understand that. And it, it needs to be understood. I know Libras get a lot of flack, though, too. So I shouldn't have probably said that. I love Libras. I mean, it depends. Libras are great. Are we dating or are we talking about friendship? True. I've never dated yeah. one. Exactly. Leos are, uh, Leos. Libras are known for being very flirty. I Not guess. only that, Libras also can fall in love with you the first time they meet you. But if you guys break up tomorrow, they'll be all for you, like, immediately. That I've seen through my friends. I, yeah, that's I, true. I've done, so that's how I know. Oh. Savage. Uh, well, let's also crazy. add that Nunny is a person we've all known for a long ass time yes like yeah like definitely met you when i was like underage sneaking into the clubs of downtown manhattan allegedly in, like, the good old downtown <laughs> days allegedly no we can say that. <laughs> both of them are closed now so it's fine uh, exactly true 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 they won't they won't be they won't be like <laughs> indicted or whatever the word is implicated <laughs> We but yeah, <laughs> yes, I was but, gonna say like we've known you from back in the day, yeah. going out yeah. and 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 having a good time, but also now seeing you in the parties. But you'd be working in the parties, shooting, taking content. Um, so I'd love for you to share more with our listeners about your work, your work in the arts, and just kind of how you got there. Yeah, um, let's start from the, how I started into parties, of course. It started when I was about 15, 16, doing teen parties. A lot of you guys don't understand that uh, if you're not from New York, there used to be teen parties, you know, at, at a lot of the clubs that aren't, a lot of them don't exist anymore, like, you know, Speed, Exit, and all these places. So I would promote those. They wouldn't give me much money. It was like 50 bucks, 100. But when you like 16 in New York in like the early 2000s, that was a lot of money to me. Mm-hmm. So I started out promoting and then, you know, I did I went to college for a few years to learn how to do film. So I fell in love with film and then um, I came back out, promoted again and then doing a bunch of other stuff. Like then I started filming parties and that's really when like I found like a niche where I was like, if I film these parties, I can charge this, get it done. And it's the quickest way to uh, uh, associate yourself with a, a parties that you can also host. Like I tell my mm. friends, like, yo, I need every party I, I shoot. Like, I need a list. I need a list of at least five or ten. 
because I'm inviting my friends and I, I need women around me that I trust and I know. And I want to hang out, you know, with my friends. So this is the best way for me to hang out with my friends is usually when I'm uh, working a party. For those people that don't know about what everyday people is, maybe they don't live in the city. Like, what is it? How would you describe it? Because it's more than a party, right? Yeah. You can't say you don't live in the city because we're all over now. You know, mm -hmm. we're, we're a global uh, company now. You know, we're, we're mainly in New York, of course. We do a lot of parties in New York, but we also do a good amount in L.A., Miami, London, Africa. Um, mm -hmm. We've done Germany. We've oh, done wow. Paris. Yeah, we've done, then, you know, we also done D.C. and Philly and, and all these other places. And, you know, every time we go somewhere, it's like consistently popping parties. We've been throwing consistently popping parties for ten, over 10 years. Like, not they easy. are popping. Can't attest to that, yes. Can't, can't, can't tell you how many people be like, when it's time, when the season comes around, I'm a very popular guy. I'm going to tell you that. <laughs> Everyone's like, yeah, honey, let me get a, on your list. Like, I'll be like, yo. Relax. Chill out. So you do know, you use this as leverage um, in the dating world? No, that's the one thing I won't ever <laughs> use it for. Like, that's kind of, I do use it for the leverage of getting me forward in life if I need to. Like, mm -hmm. you need who you want. Like, yo, come talk to me when you get here. So, you know, mm -hmm. yeah, people is a, is a great event that, you know, it's predominantly uh, run by black people, which is a beautiful mm -hmm. thing as well. And for me, working that event is such a, a joyful thing because I helped build that, you know, the mm -hmm. the video work you see there is actually the work that I made over time with them. And we like craft this beautiful visionary that I'm realizing that a lot of people use my style. So, you know, shout out to me for <laughs> helping, be great, you know? helping people be great. Yeah, you right? have a really good way of like capturing just like beautiful black people joy like really beautiful videos and i feel like you Vibes. make these little movie clips like they're like little sh shorts, shorts of Very like short. someone just having a great time mm -hmm. oh yeah like for me it was just you know showing the essence of black people in their in their essence honestly of just being them you know and that's something i really enjoy about working that party because i've never been there with you know i have met people that was like you know, we should have Parties die, or it's like, it ain't really for me. And I get that. Everyday people isn't for everybody, but it's for me. And if you hang out with me, I'm going to make it for you. You know, it just really depends on who you are around at that party. Because if you're with the right people, you're always going to have a good time. So you got to come with the right people. Come with your people. You're going to have a good time. And if you see me and I know you, I'm going to make sure you're good. Like, what you want? You want a drink? I got you. You want to go over here? We out. Come sit at my table. We chilling. Like, don't worry about nothing. Period. I'm going to show you the best hospitality I can, you know, I'm an older gentleman. I gotta, I gotta be that way. <laughs> or the guys in the I can't see anyone not having fun. Yo, guys, guys be like, yo, this man, yo, I get my friends from like Far Rockaway or the hood or, and I get them to come out. I try to show them the best time. Introduce yeah. them to everyone. Whatever field they in, I'm gonna introduce it as someone in their field. Like, yo, you are MTA? Yo, this person runs MTA, like type stuff like that. Mm -hmm. you know? Like, I'm going to get you forward. I'm going to get you, I'm going to have you, you're going to have a good time, but we're also going to push you forward. And that's how I, yeah. you know, use everyday people as well, you know. Totally. I love that. I love that. It's like a whole empire. I think it's so cool, like, that something from nightlife could become, like, a movement. Yeah. And, like, feed people, pay people, and all off the strength of, like, people just needing a place to go move their bodies and, like, feel free and come together. It's fly. Uh, to me, the best part of it all is this is what I wanted to do overall when I was younger, when I was doing events first. I said, I want to build a, a empire out of a party that, you know, changes people's lives. Some people, they've, they've met their loved ones. I've met probably the last three girlfriends in my 30s at Everyday People, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, like I've met loved ones mm. that I, yeah, I met good friends that I'm still great friends with. Some of my best friends that, you know, we, we bonded over everyday people. It's, it really is a beautiful thing to be a part of, but it's also a beautiful thing to experience. And I like to do both. Like I would film the whole party, but I make sure I take a little time out to experience as well with my friends and with my coworkers or my family now, you know what I'm saying? So shout out to them. Yeah. Hell yeah. Work hard, play hard. 
So at the end of 2020, you had a brain stroke and yeah. you were in a coma, I want to say, for a month. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you also lost vision in your right eye and just like through that process, you had to relearn to walk, write, speak. And I just still can't believe like I was on your page yesterday, like looking at where you were and how you are now. So first just want to say like, so happy that you were able to recover and you're feeling better and your health is better. Um, but also would love to hear more about just that experience, what you went through and like really what it taught you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I want to start a little ahead of that, which I think kind of led to that a little bit. So, yeah. um, that month of December, I was uh, dating a girl. We don't have to say her name, you know, shout out to her because what she does next was a, 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 a marvelous thing. What she's going to do next. So we go to Africa for a vacation it's me boss moma bunch of other people from ep and dreamville and, and you know we're chilling with them and you know some of us takes other people with us and we're out there we're having a good time blah 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 whatever come back me and i had the biggest fight in a long time on christmas eve like christmas christmas eve like to the point where i had to like sleep over our friends house type and and not make it home type stuff so <laughs> it was really like a stressful environment I was in at the time. And then I'm also eating these high food that's pushing up my blood pressure and I'm stressed and you know, the, the imminent danger of just COVID being there, December 31st, mm -hmm. 6 AM. Couldn't talk. I just felt like my head was filled up with like craziness. And luckily my mom was at my house at the time and oh I went to the bathroom banging on the walls. She's like, Yo, what the, what you doing? I'm like, and I fall into her. She's like, what's going on? she's panicking she's panicking mm -hmm. i'm coughing out blood and you know visually this is wild and i don't even remember most of this so this mm -hmm. is the crazy thing so now instead of her calling 911 she calls my grandmother and goes, mm -hmm. he's just bleeding everywhere i don't know what to do my grandmother said "Bitch, get off the phone with me and call 911 <laughs> she goes you're right picks up called the emt doesn't come it's uh the cops come and they're like the cop like the cops Cops are looking for drugs. It's, mind you, I'm oh on the floor. Fucking God. Like, I'm on the floor, like, sh like shivering and blood is coming out, and I'm just like literally dying. And this cop just like, we're, we're, we're the good stuff at her. And then, then the EMTs come, and there's two women, and two women and my mom had to bring me down the steps. Cop didn't help. Shout out to New Jersey trans cops. You guys kind of suck. I'm not going to hold you because that, <laughs> that man, oh, that man alone. I never had a problem with any cops out here. That man alone sucked. Got to the hospital. Died immediately, flat. <gasps> I got lucky. I got there in time, but I flatlined immediately. And then they got me back. First of all, they tell my mom, um, "If you don't want to bring your son back, we flatlines again for like the third or fourth time, whatever. We don't have to." Well, it was mm. going to die. My mother said, "You might. You bring my son back flat." She's sitting there just stressing, and then she calls my girl. My girl comes. She was at, I think she was at Robley House, and they was working on something. She comes all the way over at like five, six in the morning. She, you know, that cab ride probably for her was wild because my mother didn't know what was going on. Get to the hospital. Now I'm out. Now I'm out. I wake up. See, this right here is my tracheotomy. So mm -hmm. I had that to breathe and everything. I had a hole in my throat. I wake up. I'm sitting here like, why is my right eye gone? Why do I, why can't I talk? And then, you know, my mom and my uh, girlfriend at the time came. They was like, yo, my, my mother's like, well, you're good. Don't worry about it. You'll be all right. Something crazy just happened. You had a stroke. I'm like, a stroke? I'm 34. What do you mean I had a stroke? I thought this is an old man stuff. But mm -hmm. my, you know what day it is? I was like, because I couldn't talk. She goes, nigga, it's the 29th of January. I was like, oh my fucking God. What? I was so, I cried like probably that whole night. Yeah. I really was like, I can't feel the legs that are, like, I couldn't feel my legs like that. Like, I knew they were there, but I couldn't move them. But I knew they were there. And then, so when I'm in the dock, when you're in the hospital, they got to, like, you know, move you around. They got to check, keep checking on you. They got to wash you. Mm -hmm. I'm like, I feel fine. I feel like myself a little bit. Just feel like somebody beat, like, the holy hell out of me. They say, yo, we're going to sit you up. If you ever watched the video, it's them pushing me up to sit up. I couldn't sit myself up. And I'm sitting here, like, my mother said, yeah, you're going to be fine in a few weeks. I'm like, woman. I can't even sit myself up, let alone walk. What do you mean I'm going to be fine in a few? Like, I couldn't, like, what she was saying, and I couldn't say it. So that even frustrated me more that I couldn't say anything. But mm -hmm. over time, 
I started, you know, they helped me walk. I started learning how to walk. So I'm sitting up. I'm good. I'm good to go. They said, all right, now we're going to put you in rehab for like six weeks. I'm like, cool. I actually beat rehab in six days. Like, I was out there doing everything. Mm. Like, yo, we could let them home. Crazy. I didn't realize was how, how difficult the transition of relearning things. Because it wasn't just relearning how to walk, talk, do all that. The learning how to just dry yourself. I couldn't dry myself like I used to. Like, you know, you'd be like, I was drying myself sitting down like, like I was out of breath every time I try to do mm-hmm. it. I, you know, I didn't realize also mm-hmm. I lost like 70, 80 pounds. So my body wasn't used to that extreme weight loss. So, you know, putting underwear on, drying myself, also making sure my bandages were, you know, clean. And the only thing I was enjoying was my bed and taking showers. You know, I was just like, I was so depressed from it too, because I didn't think I'd be able to get back to editing and, you know, doing video because my body was weak. I, my eye is gone. Like, I like it's completely blind, but you can't tell. So I'm just like, how am I going to get back? And shout out to uh, Sinclair. He uh, pretty much the CFO. Like, he, like, he's the guy that, like, he's our guy at Everyday People. He would check in on me and, and his wife as well. She was like, I need you to edit something. And it was like kind of a test for me to see if I can do it and mm-hmm. still have that, that skill set. Because like I said, I'm mentally still kind of checked out. I did it and it really like, build me up and then again my girl at the time she'd handle my finances she kept all my friends uh you know up to, updated uh, yeah she did all that i had to do none of that which shout out to her for doing that like i love her to death still for you know holding me down and you know the stroke was just something that i think you know black men should really young black men like my age and younger like you know we're getting sick at a younger age mm-hmm. and i think black people as a whole should just really go to the hospital more because I wasn't going to the doctor like that. I like how I do now. Boy, it's getting checked out. Like, enough. Mm -hmm. Eye, throat, whatever I need to get checked out on, I'm getting it checked out. I'm not waiting, you know. And I think there's something where it's just kind of like, you know, there's a whole, like, mystique of, like, you know, they're they're after us. And it does feel like that at times. I was in the hospital like, yo, they're going to kill me in here. I really, Mm -hmm. where my mind was from a coma, which I didn't even know I was in, but I knew I was somewhere different. Like the dreams and the, the thoughts I had was wild. So when I'm in the hospital. I feel like this one nurse was really trying to kill me. She looking at me like this from far. <laughs> no, either, she, either she want to fuck or she want to kill me. And I didn't think she wanted to. It's like when they washing you, it's just like, yo, you look wild crazy. Like I was looking <laughs> like my shit was growing now. I was missing a patch of hair because that's why they took the blood out of my fucking skull so I can survive. Oh like, my Jesus. The whole experience of it made me appreciate life. So when I was going to therapy for mental health, I really just like every also everybody should go to therapy at least once, twice a week. Like it's a beautiful thing to experience and it really does help, you know, it really did help me get back to who I am again today. And actually I think I'm better than what I was before I had the show. Mm. So, you know. I just hope that, you know, and I've I've realized that, you know, since I had it, a lot of young black men are having strokes. I think uh, Nene Leak's son had one. Um, mm-hmm. You know, it's 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 a thing that, and I got lucky because my boy uh, JB, his brother, also was a little, a little bit older than me. He had one as well, and he was he was a he was a little bit more messed up than I was. There's another person that's still like in a coma. They told my mother that I'm gonna be a, either either they're gonna have to pull a plug because I'm gonna be a vegetable. But I wasn't waking up. That's what they told. Like we don't we don't see this man waking up. So my mom was like, nah, we're going to leave him on there. He's going to wake up. Yeah. And I eventually did. But that wow. first, that December 31st, New Year's Eve for my family, they all came to my house and got drunk. And I was like, I don't think they're drinking all my liquor, but they did. So shout out to them. <laughs> but they were all, you know, all my family, my uncles, cousins, everybody came to the hospital to see me because that was it. It was a, yo, this wow. is the last time you're going to be able to see him. But it was also hard because COVID, so you, they really couldn't see me. They let, they let my girlfriend at the time and my mom, the only two people that saw me, you know, you got my uncle outside crying. You got my aunts, my cousins. Everybody was like, oh, this is crazy. And it was just an experience that I'll never forget. I'm not trying to say, like, I know it sounds like, oh, my God, it was a great experience. No, nah, it was the, the worst but yet best experience for me to go through. Mm. It opened my eyes to a lot of things that my eyes were close to that I needed to open up because I'm pushing 40 now, you know. I got to start paying attention to my health. I get heartburn. Mm-hmm. So it'd be a lot. It'd be a lot. Wow. Wait, so you said you weren't going to the doctor. So did they figure out the cause of this? Like, did you have some sort of 
issue that so like you chronic, just know about? No, um, like in your family? From, from what they told me, pretty much was like, yo, high blood pressure. My, my blood pressure was like 250 over like 150 type. It was too high. And they pretty much said it's like a blood vessel burst somewhere. And it got in my brain. And it was just drowning out my oh shit. My and it drowned out the back somewhere. Luckily, I didn't lose both my eyes because that would have just ended my whole career. So, so me, currently, I, you don't, you can't, you still can't see out of one eye. I'm st for two for the last two years, I've been blind in my right eye. And, you know, I, I can still film, I can still work, but it also makes me, you know, when I eat certain things, I think twice about things I do because I can't lose this left one. I need the mm -hmm. left one. I got to lose wow. the left one. It's a wrap. Like, <laughs> what am I gonna do with life? Just gonna be sitting here like this the whole time, <laughs> Shut up. listening to TV. Well, you need I'm it for so your good. work, you know. Yeah. Or it's gonna be an early retirement. Like, you know, right. I, retire. like, I can't. But it's just, wow. it was like my life. I never went through anything like that in my entire mm -hmm. life. I started, you know, being from the hood and you know dealing with regular hood stuff that I didn't realize also wasn't a normal thing. That's a right. whole different story. But you know that situation where it was focusing on me. And shout out to everybody that also gave me money to support and help me get through that it helped my mom you know going to the hospital every day had to you know that was costly and stuff so i gave her like a lot of that money as well and my mm -hmm. uh, my girlfriend at the time i gave her a lot of that money at the time too i think i, I don't even want to tell you how much i gave her a lot though i know i was like it was so much and then i was also getting so much from not working and, and that COVID situation they were just throwing money at us yeah so it was just kind of like yo my, my they took care of me they deserved that money like they get mm -hmm. mm -hmm. It should get at least Amazing. more than half. Like I don't mind just keeping this right. much. I should get this much. But yeah. so you mentioned how after going through that, it makes you look at like the way you take care of yourself from a health health wise. Yeah. But have have your perspectives changed in any other way in the ways that you look at life, in the ways that you approach each day, or um, the kind of opportunities you take, risks you take. Things like that. Um, I do everything now. What a I have to, you know. what I'm saying I have to do things now. Hold up, I'll show you something too. Uh, this right here is something that uh, is a part of my life now, you know. And um, this is my blood pressure machine, and I have to take it, you know, once a day, sometimes just to check my blood pressure to make sure I'm not, you know, overdoing anything or. My blood pressure isn't too high, and then this is my my new, you know, daily med. Not this row, but the not the uh, Thursday row, but these two rows, right? These three rows is what I have to, you know, take every day. So now, you know, meds are in my life now every day. Just my vitamins, you know, checking my blood pressure, like little stuff like that is a it's a new thing for me. So it, it would always remind me, take care of yourself, you know. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I, I, you know, I'm not doing drugs anymore, stuff like that, or you know, I'm not drinking as much as I was, but I still indulge in drinking, though. That's the one thing that mm -hmm. when I don't really want to, but it's just, um, overall, it was, I look at, like I said, I look at everything I do now in, a, in, a, in a, the, the biggest, smallest microscope as I can, because I never want mm -hmm. my life to end, you know, and, yeah. it, and it's just like, I never want to experience that again, like never again. And if I do- So you recognize the preciousness of life? In a different oh. way. Oh, I press. Uh, I eat food now like this. Mm. <laughs> what is this? Ain't that? I don't want it. I'm over yeah. here getting haircuts every two weeks now. Like, I didn't get one in like three weeks because it's January. But like, you know, my whole outlook on everything. If it's the smallest beauty or the the biggest like person, you know, who I am in the inside and you know stuff like that. Yeah, I got you. Um, I do want to say a big fuck you to the cops that came to your spot because like it's fucked up. that's Wasting fucking time. crazy and like mm -hmm. who knows like how that could have escalated and what could have happened the waste of time that was spent when you should have been at the hospital like mm -hmm. I think people don't understand when we talk about <clears throat> issues of systemic racism in this country and they think black people are just on our like uh what is it our soapbox and we're just like saying yeah. the same shit but like it's instances like that like i would never think and the average person might never think 
that instead of EMTs immediately coming to your home, that cops would come to your home. And then on top of that, cops seeing you clearly unwell, instead of trying to take action, they're trying to see what drugs you're on. Yeah. Right. right. But there are drugs trying in to your criminalize home. the situation. Right. I, I don't, me personally, like I said, I don't remember the day. It's what my mom went through that makes me so angry about it. Mm-hmm. Yes. Like, yo, this older woman is in peril. Like, help her. What are you doing? Even if it's like, I look young and I could probably be doing drugs, but still help her. Call the EMT, mm-hmm. whatever. They made her call again to bring another EMT. And I was just like, yo, it's fucking ridiculous. ridiculous. I don't even know who the officer is. I don't know how you I was going to say, it's giving lawsuit, maybe. Right. Know. Right. <laughs> who we got to call? Lawsuit. Right. It's yeah. giving you know, Chilino funny. and Barnes. <laughs> Talking to you guys make it, it makes me like realize, like, yo, that cop, you know, you know, fucked up. Like, fuck him. But yeah. I, never thought about it because I was just happy to be alive. Right, right. Absolutely. I also, because you did mention that you actually flatlined. So you actually died, technically. Mm -hmm. This might be a crazy question, but like, do you remember anything from that? Like, did anything happen? All right. So I remember a particular dream that I was having. Um, I don't know when it happened, but I remember it was a a very like, like coming to age realization dream. So at, at one point I'm getting, I feel like I'm getting dragged into a room and I don't know where I'm going, but my mom would felt like she was by my side. Out of nowhere, everything just changes. Now I'm in like this, this, this home and I'm on the floor and I sit up and uh, there was a, a kimono dragon next to me for some reason. I don't know why, it just was there, but it didn't move. And then my mom's ex-boyfriend uh, came to me and said, hey, how are you feeling? I'm like, I feel fine. Couldn't talk still for some reason. I was like, I feel fine. But it was like, I, it just sounded like I was trying to talk, but that nothing came out. He goes, hey, here's your favorite beer. Your family, everybody's outside waiting for you. Let's go outside. I go outside, I'm on this island. Everything behind the island is too bright for me to see, but I see my family. Everybody's celebrating me. I'm like, why is everybody celebrating me? And then it made me realize, like, I am probably dead right now. I don't think, I don't think I'm alive. I don't know what's going on. But I don't and you had that consciousness in your brain, like that kind of like, like when you're, what's it called? When you're having that, like a lucid dream almost, like you yeah. were aware that you, you know were dreaming you're and dream. you were, yeah. But I have, I've had, I've had, I've, I've had those over time, like the lucid dreams a lot, but this felt different. Like this felt like, you know, mm-hmm. like yo, this is done. Cause it just felt so happy. Oh, great. And that beer was mm-hmm. fucking delicious. Mm-hmm. Like, I've never tasted a beer this well. So I was just like, this is probably the end right here. But then. The kimono dragon dragged me out and then swallowed me. <laughs> and that's how it kind No. Of, yeah, it swallowed me. <laughs> I kind of woke up in the room, couldn't talk. I had all these fucking plugs and tubes down my throat and my nose. Right. And that's one of the pictures I showed on my IG. Yeah. And it, um, and I was trying to take them out because I was like, what's going on? I couldn't talk, but I didn't know what was going on. I got the first thing I think that tube out my throat because I just was like, yo, it felt like somebody was, hand was in my throat. And they did that a lot with like this too. They kept putting up my nose, my throat. I'm like, yo, what are y'all doing? This is y'all trying to kill me. That's what I thought. But I couldn't <laughs> voice the pain that it was giving me. But I just woke up in a dark room and I was like, yo, this ain't my room. And in my mind, I'm like, I'm supposed to be throwing a party with Maine later for New Year's Eve. And he said, you ain't. Mm-hmm. My nurse is like, like, you ain't what? going. <laughs> Sit your ass. <laughs> it's February. It's February. It's Question. In addition to like sharing what you went through in order to just get support from your community. What made you want to be so transparent about what you went through, like posting a photo like that? Like, I think that would take a lot for some people to do. Well, I'm an open book always. You guys know me. I'm always, I tell you everything, especially when I get lit, I tell you everything. (laughs) It was the video before that, that I dropped and I wanted everybody to kind of see that I was back. But I didn't want to have to keep going to people and telling them what happened. Mm-hmm. Like every time, like, yo, where you been? Or they might not even know. And I got to come out of nowhere and say, yo, you know what happened to me? I was like, you know what? Mm-hmm. Let me just post it. Let everybody see it. So now they know what happened. When I posted mm-hmm. it, I didn't think it was going to get that much traction and that much, like, love. And, you know, people were just sending me stuff. Shout out to everybody that, you know, showed me love and sent me stuff and, you know, you know, had conversations with me. So for the, like, like I said, from then till even now, I haven't ran into some people in years and we talk about it still to this day. And, you know, they always, you know, they, some people get me like, they about to cry face. Mm-hmm. I probably have seen every one of my friends. I'm about to cry to you right now face. 
because it was like, yo, that I sometimes I got to realize like how significant that was for a lot of my friends. I had some friends tell me, uh, shout out to uh, some friends. They said that they were going around Brooklyn looking for me in different hospitals. But mm-hmm. the problem was they kept calling me Nunny and not Doc. <laughs> I'm my real name, so. And I wasn't even in New York hospital. I was in New Jersey hospital. I, I thought I was in Chicago for some reason. I don't know. Like, I tell you, the whole situation was very, like, a weird situation. But I would, Wait, I wouldn't. So, so you, you woke up and it was around, it was around this time, right? So do you, yeah. do you not celebrate, maybe that's the wrong word, but acknowledge the date? Oh, every every time. Last year, I really celebrated. Last year, I was just on a binge. I was recently single. I'm drinking. I'm, I'm like, I'm allowed to do more. I'm going out. I'm going on dates. You know, last year, I celebrated. This year is more like, I want to just get back to me and working, working as much as possible, like having work every weekend or editing all. And before we started talking, I was editing a bunch of stuff that I still got to edit after this. So mm-hmm. I'm just on like a more work mode and getting things done, like to get back to where I was before that way. Last year was a more like I'm having fun. And also like, I haven't been single in like seven years. I've been in like three different relationships. So, you know, that newly singleness was just kind of, it was fun to just be, you know, running the streets, but not being a whore, you know, but running the streets. <laughs> I was would, would you ever make like a documentary or a short film or something about your experience? Yeah, I would definitely. That's why I try to keep as much, you know, content that I have on it. I probably should have made more, but like again, like I said, I was just so drained and I mentally yeah. wasn't where I'm at today and where I was, I'm not mentally there, but now I am mentally there, so I would definitely like wouldn't mind talking about it or you know, um just yeah, really just talking about it and letting everybody know what happened, especially like, you know, a lot of young black people and Yes. You know, you know, we're endangered species, like sometimes. Mm-hmm. You know, Seriously. For stuff that we don't even know that's on our, like, on our heinies. Like, no, like the amount of I... people that died in the last two years, like, you know, with, with Virgil and, um, oh, uh, yeah, what's the name for Black Panther? Damn. Um, Chadwick. 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 Didn't even know those two was even sick. Right. And the guy right. from, I mean, this is different, but the man from The Wire. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, Michael Dude, K. No. Williams, like, yeah. mm-hmm. didn't see none of that coming. Yeah, like, damn, exactly. Just... We it need we like... need you to drop something. We're gonna give you more work because I think a lot of the topics that you cover too are really important, right? It's not just about the fact that you got sick, but like all the things leading up to it, stress. Like you talk about going mm-hmm. to therapy. Like how many yeah. black men are open and talking about that, and like would love to see someone speaking to how that's changed things for them or just being yeah. mindful of, you know, your choices, even though, I mean, you know, I know you, I know you was probably out here having fun doing it, having a good time, but so many people <laughs> still are, you know, we're all getting in our thirties, getting up there and you don't think about certain lifestyle changes that you have to make until something happens. And then it's like, Oh shit. <laughs> and like, mm-hmm. you don't want to get to the Oh shit part. Cause mm-hmm. you don't know what that could look like. Uh, I, I got to the old shit part and it wasn't good. It wasn't right. Good. What would you do? All right. I got this long ass email. Oh, the one relationship hope? Yes. I just forwarded that because I was cleaning out the other email, the one that's like attached to the YouTube. And I saw that and I was like, oh. Okay. Because I'm like, how did we just get this? I see it's a forward. I thought they like were like, Bitches, you didn't answer. Here it is oh. again. <laughs> no, 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 no. It's a forward. Because I just saw it. But then I was like... <clears throat> this okay, this is long. quite long. This is quite long. Um, but Glenn's not here, so we have a little more time, I guess. This person says, hello. Over time, I came to oh. realize that I have dated a bunch of people and eventually to the point friends and I had an intervention. That I had commitment issues and never tried to put in work towards relationship. With that conversation, I ended up dating a person for 10 years. He was emotionally and physically abusive, and eventually I stepped away. I still to this day never felt a connection until recently. It was easy to leave the toxic environment and start my healing process and to be ready to date again. 
after my relationship, I met a new person. He said the right words in the beginning, showed me, gave me the capability to really fall in love and feel it. I'm skipping some of this. I'm sorry. It's very long. However, my only issue is until the last two weeks when we argued. He'd been acting very cold and distant. And when I choose to talk to him, he pushes me away. Over the course of the conversation, I asked questions regarding what he wants and what his perception is. After the same question cycling over and over, he was not sure what he wanted. I finally felt this was the decision that he made and he was being pawned off on me. Huh. He mentioned open relationship and that he was doing it for me. I do not see how that correlated with what I wanted from a partnership. I do believe open relationships are good. Oh no, open relationship is the exact opposite of the values of creating a family. Also requesting an open relationship is the opposite of being monogamous, correct? <laughs> right now, I really do feel that we do not have the foundation for one either. I did not disregard his view, simply just wanted to talk it over. I might have skipped something that was important, but I'm, and I'm lost. Seems like I'm, this person wants an open relationship. Okay, and I'm lost. So. Um, <laughs> this is this uh, it's such a long email. It's guys. very long. Please, when you email hello at Black Girls Texting, make it concise. Um. So, uh, t- too long didn't read. This person is with someone who wants an open relationship. I'm going to get to the last paragraph. My problem is that my mind feels and knows the true outcome of what he wants and reality. I am fine with that, but the confusion came when he stated he loved me. I feel love and showing love is not just words and, and a series of actions. If he truly felt the way he did, he would have moved to the next step or the fact during an argument he would have attempted to fix the situation. What? I feel like he's a good person and we do have a potential of being a strong couple. Even this time apart, the connection and energy I feel towards him gravitates and is extremely strong. I do not understand any of it. If you choose to air my discussion over the air, I would really love to have multiple opinions. And also for the person I am dating to hear others' thoughts as well, I can give you his email upon request. Oh. I really hope you can help. Kind regards, Amit. Um, well... There's a lot in here, and I'm not going to lie. We're not fully following what's going on. Yeah. But. Well, what about this? If we synthesize it, you're in a relationship with someone and they ask you to be in an open relationship. Right. What? How would you feel? I know your answer. Mm-hmm. You'd be like, yay. <laughs> <laughs> <sighs> but if it's not, if it's not for you, then you cannot do it. You know, right. like it's. It, I don't think that if in your heart of hearts, like that's something that is really a deal breaker that you're, you'll come to being comfortable with it. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. I think, I think a lot of people are like, Oh, monogamy is so hard. Polyamory is going to be so much easier. And I would assume based off of the people that I know who are actually doing things in those source of relationships is it's actually harder it's like you have to be way more honest way more communication i mean for many reasons one of the most important in my opinion is health so yeah it's not easier so if you're not 100 percent on board i don't think you should just do something because your partner is asking for you it might mean that you guys are not a match or you could tell your partner no it's not for me and if they are not willing to also not do it, then yeah, you guys are not a match. Yeah, I agree. And you don't want to then resent the person mm-hmm. because you tried to do something that you knew in your heart of hearts you weren't comfortable with. And I think that yeah. goes for the same, the other side of the coin. Like for me, I don't really believe in monogamy long term. I don't really like see myself only seeing with one person for the rest of my life. But in the same vein, like, I'm pretty monogamous, like, because I know that's important to my, my man. Like I'm not out here in these streets. Right. Um, and there's like an agreement that we have in terms of like what rules and what's set up. It's not just like, oh, we're open. And like, now you can go do what you want. Because if you don't trust that person, that shit's not going to work. Yeah, I agree. Um, well, thank you for writing in again. If you have, Any advice that you want to get from some gals from Brooklyn, our email is hello at Black Girls Texting. Our TikTok is hello. No, our TikTok is Black Girls Texting. Our Twitter is Black Girls Text One. 
Um, and our Instagram is Black Girls Texting. So keep us in your group chats. Keep sharing. Keep telling people about us. Uh, join the Patreon, which is also Black Girls Texting. And we love you so much. Thank you for supporting, as always. Thank Bye. you. Thank you. Bye.